Hi guys, it's Arch Womano. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Today is the March questions and answers video. I've got a big smile on my face. I don't know why. <laughs> What's going on? I'm just happy to see you guys. I'm just going to start because I'm very aware that these videos can become very, very lengthy. These are all the questions that you guys asked in March. Okay, the first question was on my February questions and answers video and this one's from Maria P. She says, I have the feeling you are not a fan of molecular perfumes, but do you think you'll ever do a video about them? It would be so interesting to hear your take on them. I guess Maria that you mean things that showcase scent molecules like Ambroxan and ISO E Super and Cashmaran and all things like that. I am not not a fan of them. They're kind of hard to describe and that's not why I don't talk about them either because I do like a challenge. I have actually thought about doing it and I was going to start with Ambroxan since it's in a lot of things. So you have jogged my memory and I mean, I do have a list of videos that I'm gonna do, but yeah, this one's just kind of slipped down the list. So maybe I should do it. There is a tricky subject, but I'm not not a fan of them. I'm not a fan of molecules, the brand, <laughs> I'll say that because only because of the way they portray their fragrances. They portray them to be these mystical, magical, wonderful things that do all kinds of things on your skin. Uh, really, they don't. So it's mainly that brand, but you know, I'm yet to be proven wrong by them. Something could happen where I fall in love with them. But um, yeah, thanks for your question. You have sparked my memory. The next question was on my 10 green fragrances for spring and it's from Annie Reviews. Love green perfumes. I've been enjoy I've been eyeing Beach Hut Woman, also Bracken and Myths. Which one would you recommend? I like all three of those. Myths is probably the most challenging of the bunch because it's a really aggressive Sheepra perfume and it's kind of no holds barred, in your face, mossy, really strong one. It's a Sheepra done in an Amouage style, which they're, they're kind of opulent anyway. I always say that. Uh, so it just depends. Beach Hut. I think my favorite of the three is Bracken, but I would definitely try and get samples of all of them. Myths is a challenge, like I said, so be careful. I think Bracken is the best. I remember wearing it and thinking, oh, this, this could be a full bottle worthy one. But um, yeah, Beach Hut, I can't really remember. It's Beach Hut Man that I liked more, I think. I'm more familiar with the man one than the woman one, so I can't really answer that. But Bracken, definitely, and Myths is worth smelling because of how unusual it is. The next question was on my Samsara video where I talked about the new formula and how it's butchered beyond all belief. Tear. It's from Mona Chipman and she says, I just bought this version of Samsara. I do love it. Good. Question, how can I get my hands on the vintage Samsara and feel secure that it's the real deal? I see some advertised on eBay, thoughts please. I have bought three vintage bottles of Samsara from eBay and not had any problems. I, I don't know how true this is gonna be, but this is the way I feel. I do think that at the time of that being around, the 90s, I don't think counterfeit and you know, fake perfumes were quite as rife as they are now. Especially with Samsara, it was, it's more Chanel that the fakers targeted back in those days and still today. But I've never had any problems with them. As usual, you know, it's kind of a rule of, general rule of thumb, check out the seller, check out their, their feedback, you know, all of the stuff that you would do when you buy anything off eBay, I guess. But eBay is a good place. They're always popping up there. And I can't believe I'm telling you all this because now the more you buy, the less there is for me to buy. I mean, it's a given. You can find them on eBay. I'm, I'm only kidding. But yeah, I've never had any problems. Just be smart about it and be careful. I hope you get the vintage because it's absolutely glorious. The next question was on my Neil Chapman book review and it comes from Lavender B. I recognize that name. You've asked questions before. Do you know any perfumes that smell like white chocolate at all, please? I've Googled this, but have seen some conflicting information. That's a tough one. It's normally dark chocolate, like, you know, cocoa powder or milk chocolate that you find in perfumes. The only ones that spring to mind for me would be Britney Spears Fantasy, the original one in the pink bottle. However, saying that, the, since the reformulation, that perfume has become more fruity. The focus is more on the kiwi now, where before it was more focused on the 
white chocolate part of it. So if you can find the original Britney Spears fantasy, a good indication of it is that the neck of the bottle has green gems on it. The new ones don't, just a pro tip. And it's not really listed, but Coromandel by Chanel is a benzoin patchouli type, amazing, beautiful perfume. But to me, it feels like it has white chocolate in it. Talking about a full on white chocolate note though, to me, white chocolate just smells of vanilla. So I don't know, I guess you could maybe try and find some ice creamy vanillas because they give the effect of white chocolate. That would be my best advice for you. Thanks for your question. The next question was on my September things. The, the thing is really small, I can't see it. September questions and answers. It's from Mixtress Ray. Ooh, I like that name. I have a question for you and maybe your next question, no, no, that's not what she said. <laughs> I have a question for you and maybe your next question video. I am obsessed with the bergamot opening of Midnight Poison, but Rose doesn't work on me. So the dry down always goes bad. Do you know of a another perfume that has a similar bombastic bergamot opening? Uh, patchouli in the base maybe without the rose interesting that the rose is what goes wonky on you rose is kind of universal i think it fits in to many perfumes in many different ways are you sure it's not the patchouli that goes weird patchouli is much more likely culprit to go weird on your skin than rose i don't know you know your skin i don't but now trying to think of a fragrance that has bergamot and patchouli so many oh my gosh Having said that, none spring to mind, but bergamot is in 80% of French perfumery. It's the, it's the most versatile opening note in a perfume. And patchouli is also a very extremely common base note. Because I can't think of any, I'm gonna give you a tip. If you go to fragrantica.com, you can search by notes and there is a way to search for more than one note at a time and it will filter down into perfumes that have both of those notes it's a really cool tool that they have so you can in effect search for a perfume with five of your favorite notes and get a suggestion it's really cool so i would point you in that direction because talking about bergamot and patchouli they're two very common notes i could think of loads that have bergamot opening but not necessarily that have patchouli in the base as well You'll probably find a lot of Sheepras that have that. So search Sheepras on Fragrantica as well, because Sheepras always have bergamot in the opening. Modern Sheepras have patchouli instead of oak moss now. So check that out and see how you get on. Good luck. The next question, question was on my 10 favorite Lush perfumes video that I did recently, and it's from Sybil Haynes. Have you tried Rentless? That was my signature for a while. It, I tried to smell Sappho at Lush yesterday, but they didn't have it. By the way, have you read her poetry? It's the greatest. I have not read Sappho's poetry. I do love the perfume though. That's a shame they, you couldn't smell it because it's one of the best Lush perfumes I think ever. It's really, really great. But Rentless, I have not tried. I don't know what it's like. Is it cool? I should probably look it up. There's me thinking I've tried most of the Lush perfumes, but there's always one that escapes you, right? Maybe more, I don't know. But no, I haven't tried that one, so I can't answer your question. Sorry. I hope you get to smell Sappho soon though, Sybil. The next question was on my Aquilina Pink Sugar review. Oh, gosh, that was years and years ago, six years ago. Baby reviewer, baby Tom reviewer. How is longevity and projection though? And it's Carolina R that asked me that. From my memory, Aquilina Pink Sugar is very, very strong. It's, it's very, extrovert in on in every facet it's very sweet it's very strong and it's very long lasting it ticks all of the boxes of being over the top for me it opens with a kind of licorice caramelized licorice smell and then it just goes into this huge fluffy marshmallow powerhouse strong overbearing if you like that kind of thing like me fragrance so I hope that answers your question. On to the next. The next one was on Camel. Ah, oh, zoologist Camel, my love. And this one's from Deb E. Is your name Debbie E? Deb E, Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. I'm trying to find the date fruit fragrance for me. 
How would you compare this to Liquide Imaginaire's Desert Suave? I may need to just go ahead and get a sample of this. There is no comparison. <laughs> You're asking maybe the wrong person because I'm always gonna gush over Zoologist Camel because I love it. I wasn't too fond of uh, Liquid Imaginaire fragrances as a whole. I have done a spotlight on them if you care to go and look because I did smell Desert Suave. Dates is a weird thing in fragrances. It works in Camel because it's in amongst oud and orange blossom and it's a little bit animalic. The one from Liquid Imaginaire was much thinner and I'm pretty sure it had a little bit of a wine smell as well. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up with something else, but it was drier. I mean, they're both about deserts, but Camel is much richer. I hope that helps. Some suggestions for you for some other date fragrances. I would try Araby by Serge Luton's. There is also a perfume called Jari and it's by Fadon Paris. Hopefully I will be putting the bottles in this video so you can see what they are. That one is a date fragrance with wine again. And yeah, Camel, Camel's the best. Camel is gonna be the best for however long, forever, in my opinion. The next question came on my uh, five discoveries and five disappointments that I've smelled recently. And you guys love that one. Wow, it's had so many views. This one is from Russ Johnson. Is it so wrong that I wanna know if you're wearing trousers at the beginning of every video? <laughs> I guess that comes from <laughs> my last questions and answers video where somebody asked me to tell them something interesting about myself. Oh my God, my damn battery ran out. I was in the middle of saying to Russ, no, it's not weird. It doesn't happen very often. And I was saying in the last questions and answers that uh, I did reveal that I wasn't wearing any trousers in my, I think it was my dodo review. Yeah. But no, it's not weird. If it happens, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I'll be sure to let you know, Russ. The next question was on my top 15 Holy Grail fragrances. And this one's from AGG. It says, is someone engaged? I think a lot of people are probably engaged and I wish them all the best. I am not engaged. The next question was, on my Tommy Hilfiger Tommy Girl review, another super old review. And this one's from Quistis Anne, and it says, how it smells. That is the strangest question you can ask on a fragrance review video when I just spent five or 10 minutes explaining exactly how it smells. I don't understand that question. My advice to you, Quistis Anne, would be watch the video and you might find out. <laughs> The next question came uh, from my discoveries and disappointments as well, and it's from Tony. Tony Braxton, maybe? No? I just believe a fragrance that rocks my world the way Lita does for you. Any recommendations would be appreciated. Just name anything that comes to mind that you think is pretty special. Most recently, Athonial Rosa by Diptyque. I love it. Check it out. You also said, would you tell me your thoughts on these? Valentino Donna in Rome, never smelled. Trisadi Donna, never smelled. Lolita Lempica, Lolita Land, please. Okay, that one I have smelled. And unfortunately, I know there's a lot of people that like it, but it was pretty much a bottle of vanillin. And vanillin is the vanilla uh, alternative cheap synthetic molecule that smells like Tic Tacs. Not when you eat a Tic Tac, but when you first put a Tic Tac in your mouth and you get that vanilla on the coating, that's what vanillin smells like. And that's what Lolita Land smelled like. Beautiful bottle, just a big fat no for me personally. I love Delina though. I don't think it's full bottle worthy for the price. Anyone here saying they hate it, I'll gladly buy it from you at a discounted price. There you go. Is, there, is anyone selling a bottle of Delina by Parfum de Mali? Because Tony wants to buy it from you. So you might make yourself a little bit of money to get another perfume in your life. The next question also on the discoveries and disappointments is from Maura B. Which Diptyque Rose fragrance is your favorite? The one that was in that video. It's Athoniol Rosa and I have fallen in love with it. It's almost my favorite Diptyque perfume ever that's 
apart from their 34 collection. The main collection they have in the oval bottles, it's my favorite one ever. It's vetiver and a really peppery, clean, white musky rose that performs like an extra. Like it's, the projection and longevity is insane on that perfume and I adore it. So that is definitely my favorite rose perfume by Diptyque. And they do love a rose. There's rose in a lot of their perfumes, but that's the best. Okay, moving on to the back page. Mark Christopher Alves asked on my mm, February questions video. Hello, I'm not really into celebrity fragrances, but I'm smitten with Ariana Grande Cloud. That one gets a lot of love, doesn't it? I see it everywhere. Do you have any celebrity fragrances you like? And if so, what are they? Thank you. So Mark, I have a lot of them. I'll tell you, JLo, Glow, her original one. Yeah, a lot of people say it smells like hairspray. A lot of people say it's very screechy. I think it's really cool. And I loved that she didn't go down the floral fruity, kind of the same as every other celebrity route when she released it. So JLo Glow will always be a favorite of mine. I've owned it a lot of times. I don't at the moment, but I have. Also by her Miami Glow. I really like Shush by Jade Goody, who is a sadly passed away a celebrity that used to be in the UK. Her, her perfume called Shush is so cheap and one of the best florals that a celebrity has ever released. It's not like anything else I've tried. It's really great. There's a lot of flowers in it. Sarah Jessica Parker has a fragrance called Lovely. Sadly, it's reformulated now, but the original one, really, really nice lavender musk perfume that smells a lot like Narciso Rodriguez for her. Didn't need to do that. That one's really good. I haven't smelled Ariana Grande Cloud, but I know that it gets a lot of attention. Oh gosh, I know. Queen Latifah has a perfume called Queen in a red bottle. And that one is a really nice woody gourmand. If you like Angel by Terry Mugler, it's in that family. So yeah, those are my favorites. Thanks for your question. The next question was on my, oh, Miami Glow. How strange is that? Sometimes the universe does really weird things. This is the thing, I don't, I just literally look at what questions have a question mark in and I just print them out. Anyway, this one's from Emiliano Fernandez. Can a man wear this perfume? The next question is from Eliska Zid Zidkova and it's on my Orchid Soleil review I did by Tom Ford. This is my signature scent for years and I love it so much, but it was discontinued, was it? Wasn't aware of that. Please don't you know any similar perfume? Not really, to be honest. That was quite a unique perfume. The closest thing in terms of feeling and texture would be the purple orchid, the velvet one. But that was a really unusual perfume. It was a tuberose one that was kind of bright, but dusty at the same time. I really liked it too, and I didn't know it was discontinued. I haven't smelled anything similar, I'm afraid. If I find anything, I will try and let you know. I don't know how, but I will try. The next one was on my Lush perfume collection video I did where I showed all of my Lush perfumes, including all of the Florence exclusives that I have. And it's from Nancy Hamill. Have you tried V by Lush? It got relaunched from 1995 and I can't find any reviews on it. I feel like we have similar tastes and would love you to your opinion on it. Loved, I guess you may love to hear your opinion on it. V, yes, I have tried it. It is kind of in the same vein as Rose Jam, and I don't mean it smells the same. I mean where Rose Jam is almost like solid floor, bombastic rose. V is like a solid floor, bombastic violet. Lush love violet. Mark Constantine, the owner of Lush, or one of the owners, loves violet, so it made sense that they would make a violet perfume. Kind of like Daddy-O shower gel, shampoo. I think it's a shampoo, Daddy-O shampoo. It's a really big, full-bodied violet. I really like it, uh, but I haven't tried it for many years, so I don't know if the relaunch is different or anything like that, so hopefully that helps. I couldn't, can't really expand much more than that, I'm sorry. The next question was on my Rose Fragrances collection for Valentine's Day. It's from Cherry 
Ely 06. How come Stella is not here? Do you not like it anymore? I mentioned this in my previous video where somebody asked about things that weren't in the Rose collection video. It's not in the collection video because I don't own it anymore. <laughs> I said that before, right? It is a collection video. So if I don't have Stella anymore, I can't put it in the video. Uh, but anyway, in answer to your question, I can expand on it and tell you that it's not that I don't like it anymore. It's because it became reformulated and I don't want to try the new one. I want to keep Stella in my mind as it was, as it's so beautiful. It was my signature for so long. Um, and when I finished my last bottle of it, I just put it to bed and I said, goodbye, Stella. It was, it's been real, bitch. And I just kind of moved on. There's always something new and exciting to wear. So Stella was a time. She is no longer a time. The next one was on my February questions and answers and it's from Marcy LK. Question for next time, if your entire collection had to be either complex perfumes that are challenging for most people to enjoy or mainstream easy to please scents, which would you choose? That is easy, complex and challenging all the way. I think when you're a perfume lover and you really start to dive into the industry and de develop it as a passion and a hobby and every waking minute of your life. I think your taste changes and it develops and I feel like I've done fragrances that are easy to like for other people. I feel like I've explored a lot of those and I'm now looking for things that are exciting and maybe not the prettiest thing in the, in the bunch. Some of those ugly ducklings that are raise people's intrigue and say, what is that? Like, you know, I, I like stuff like that. So I would much rather have an entire library collection of super complex and strange perfumes than mainstream, easy to wear. Mm -hmm. Thanks for your question. The next one was on my <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> video that I did where I talked about all of the winners and gave them each a perfume that I think they should wear. God, people haven't commented on that ever, I don't think. It's from Andrea Stevens. Have you smelled Violet Tchotchke's perfume, Dirty Violet by Heretic? It's Violet Leaf, sa Jasmine Sandback, Oris Turkish Rose, Patchouli, Cedarwood, Labdanum, Amber, Cypriol. I have the perfume and the matching candle, Violet Smoke. Violet was my fave queen and reigns supreme. Well, Andrea, I did not know that Heretic made that perfume. I know that Killian Wells of Zyrena Perfumes has made lots of the other Queen's perfumes like um, Willem's one and Pearl and Tatiana as well. I didn't know that Heretic made that. That's really cool because I am really intrigued by Heretic. I have a 10 mil of one of their perfumes and I tried a few recently and really liked them. I want to smell more by them. Now I really want to try that one especially because it's got lab labdanum in it. So thanks for bringing that to my attention. I'm gonna sniff it out. They sell it in Liberty in London, I think. So I'm gonna sniff it out next time I go there. Thank you. The next one, February questions and answers. I feel bad for asking another question for the next round. Well, that's all right, don't worry. Maybe you would have been the only person, Christine. What series or other hobbies got you through quarantine? Not sure how much the Netflix library varies overseas. <laughs> also, if you, were if you were showing someone from London for the first time, where would you take them? Oh my gosh, okay, what got me through quarantine? I don't know, wine? For the most part, I don't drink anymore, so <laughs> I stopped drinking eight months ago. Yeah. I read a lot, I am a bit of a gamer. I play PS4 quite a lot. I'm a little bit of a geek in that respect. Uh, this took up a lot of my time. Uh, I, should, I should say taking up my time doesn't make it sound, it makes it sound negative. Occupied a lot of my time. Um, doing videos and editing them takes a lot longer than people might think, especially if it's got a lot of bottles in there and it's a long video. So those are the things that I did mainly. But if I was showing somebody around London, where would I take them? Oh my gosh, I would take them, first of all, I'd want to take someone to East London because East London is kind of a cool, hip place, very artsy, lots of really interesting restaurants and 
street graffiti, kind of big graffiti pieces everywhere. It's really urban and hipstery and I really like East London for interesting food and cool places to go and drink if you still drink, which I don't. Yeah, you can take people to the main things like Westminster Abbey and all that stuff, but I like showing people the, the hidden things. Covent Garden is always a really nice area to visit for shopping. Ah, uh, I don't know. Camden Town, which is close to where I live. Really, really busy place, unfortunately. It's quite touristy, but it's you have to go there. It's very hippie, hippie slash punk slash, I don't know cool people area there's lots of incense everywhere burning and just like dr martins and there's a canal running through it and there's a huge food market there which is really nice so i would take someone there and the last place i can think of is borough market which is underneath london bridge if you like if you're a foodie that's the place to go thanks for your questions the next one is from perambulation have i said that right what are the perfumes that you disliked at first but loved after a while? The main one that always springs to mind with that question is Eden by Cacharel. I used to hate it when it was first released and now I'm obsessed with it. There's been many, but Eden is definitely the main one. The next question is from James Nash and it was also on my February questions video. Thanks Tom for fielding my question about musicians and fragrance etc. Well, you're very welcome James. Here's one for next time. Do you have any fragrance related superstitions or rituals or idiosyncratic rules or issues? Thanks again, James. I don't think so. Only that I have to wear it every day or I feel bald. Totally bald, scalped. It feels like something is missing if I don't wear it. So fragrance, fragrance is just in itself an everyday ritual for me. I can imagine it is for the same of a lot of you guys that will probably wear it. If I forget to put on fragrance, I definitely feel odd so yeah just itself is my ritual i don't have anything else or any superstitions or anything like that but that's a really cool question though thank you i wish i could have given you a more interesting answer the next one's from margie louise on the same video question for next time if you really love something do you ever buy it off season like buying a more full winter perfume in spring or do you recommend only buying perfumes in the season they suit better i recommend not following rules at all I don't buy fragrances by season. I sometimes wear them by season only because certain fragrances sing better in certain weathers. Some things are designed to be, you know, more cozy and make give you a feeling of coziness, safe for aut autumnal sort of fragrances. And spring or summer, you do want something that's a bit fresher, but I have been known to wear vintage samsara in the middle of summer and citruses in winter. There aren't really any rules and I definitely don't buy them that way. I just, yeah, I don't follow rules. So I hope that answers your question. The next one is from Ruth Ann McKinnon. Thomas, do you prefer baths or showers? Shower gel or bar soap? Favorite scent? That's a really hard question. It depends on the season, the exact opposite of how I just talked about fragrances. <laughs> more baths in winter more showers in summer i love obviously lush stuff i talk about it all the time and they have a bubble bath called milky bath it is my favorite smell that lush have ever made in a product and i also have the perfume of it i'm very lucky that i it was made for me so that's my favorite bath scent it's a really luxurious creamy non-lush smelling product it doesn't smell like a lush product to me and that's not why i like it it just smells really beautiful i love it you should try and smell it if you can but yeah mainly i just use lush stuff right now i am using this limited edition thing they did for mother's day it's called mama mia and it's a bright pink body scrub that smells like heaven it smells like their fairy jasmine bath bomb with vanilla it is it's so nice and it makes your skin feel like you've got powder on it after you've used it so that's what I'm using at the moment, just if you wanted to know. <laughs> the next question is from NT. Do you like Radiohead? No, I do not. The next question is from Heidi Everhart. I love that name. It sounds like something out of Harry Potter. This was on my discoveries and disappointments. Good morning. It's evening here. 
Can you recommend some of your favorite tube rose fragrances, please? Thank you. Gosh, I've answered this question, Heidi, quite a few times, and I've even done lots of videos about it. So I'm gonna direct you to a video that I did with my lovely friend, Ella, in the park. We each talked about our five favorite tube rose fragrances that were all different from each other because we have different tastes. So check it out. I'll try and do the little thing that comes up here so you can, you can go and check it out. Okay. The next question is from Black Pearl on the same video. Black Pearl 13 even. Ooh, mysterious. Thank you so much. I almost blind by Lee 41. Can you recommend some Lily fragrances? Yes, I can. Um, you of course have Lily of the Valley and then you have Lily. Very different. Lily of the Valley is usually known as Muguet in the perfume world. Lily though, actual lilies. I think I've answered this before. Didn't somebody ask this before and I was talking about Diorella, Diorissimo? Hmm. Try Apule Moi Seychelles by Pierre Guillaume. That is a really nice lily fragrance. It smells literally like the pollen that comes off of uh, six petaled lilies. Very beautiful. Cartier, Bays of Voile. This, I'm, it's ringing a bell, guys. It's ringing a bell. I think I've answered this before. Anyway, those two, and then it's either Diorella or Diorissimo by Dior. Check them out. The next question is from Olfactive Stories, and it was on my confetti review that I did by Lush. Does it smell like daddy -O shampoo? I'm just so addicted to the smell of this product that I wish they would release it as a perfume one day. It does not smell like daddy -O perfume. Violet is only a little part of, of confetti. The main... It's, it's more about violet leaves than the flower in, in uh, confetti. It's a very green fragrance. There's also coffee in it and a bit of almond and rose. It's kind of almost earthy green violet leaves. So daddy -O is much more candy-ish, I think. It's much more sweet and pretty, where confetti is a little bit more edgy. But no, they don't smell the same. So please don't blind by it. The next question is from Mariana P. And this was on my best and worst amouage, my five favorites and my five least favorite amouages. It says, very interested in trying amouage. Which bottle would you recommend for a younger woman? I'm in my early 20s. I've been reading a lot of reviews and amouage seems to have a lot of mature smelling scents. Is there one that has a more youthful vibe? So I wouldn't say that they have mature selling selling, smelling perfumes, they just have very rich and complex perfumes. So I do have an answer for you though. The best place to start with Amouage if you want something a little bit more easy going and not too scary would be their line of fragrances called The Secret Garden. All of the perfumes come in pastel colored bottles and they're called usually something love. There's Lilac Love, Mimosa Love, I would suggest to you Blossom Love. There is also Love Tuberose. Any of those are designed to be a little bit more easygoing, a little bit more approachable, but unfortunately they still have the high Amage price tag. The next question was on my Moth and Rabbit Spotlight video that I did a while back. It's from Alessana Ambrosia. Hey, what's your sofa covered with? <laughs> this old thing? This is, um, like a throw that I got when I went to Apura Night Market in North Goa, the second time that I went to India. It was hanging up in this chaotic, crazy market with thousands of people shouting and screaming and cooking and I was absolutely loved it. And it was kind of blowing in the wind and twinkling at me and I just went over to it like a moth to a flame, like, oh my God, I need it. So I got it. The man wanted to charge me 140 pounds and I paid 17 pounds for it, so bargain for the day. The next question is from Daniel San. It was on my uh, favorite Lush perfumes video. What would you recommend as the best overall masculine leaning Lush fragrance, please? Oh gosh, okay, they don't really do masculine feminine in Lush, do they? Oh, oh, hello. I would go for Lord of Miserable. It's a really nice one that's kind of green, dark, foresty, patchouli. It's, to me, it's one of the most masculine ones. I'm sure there might be others that I might not have tried, but that one, there's also one called Himalaya. I would try that as well. Really nice one. But Lord of Misery is the one that jumps to mind first. I think it's a, a patchouli-ish oak mossy one, and I've got the solid perfume of it. 
it's a green foresty vibe one. So it's kind of like Lush's version of a fougere, which are usually traditionally masculine. The next one is also on the Lush, Lush one and it's from Chanel. I wanna try a few Lush perfumes. Can you recommend some gourmand ones? The most gourmand ones for me, I would try American Cream. It's a really beautiful kind of, it's a vanilla perfume, but it's not a typical one. It's a really comforting, I think it's kind of more benzoin, resinous, it's really fluffy smelling. There's that one. You could also try Vanillary, but vanilla, Vanillary does have quite a bit of jasmine in it as well. And if you can find it, when they do do it occasionally, Honey, I Wash the Kids, they did do a perfume of it for a short time. It pops up every now and then. And that one is kind of like a toffee, there's a chocolate bar over here called Caramac. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's it reminds me of that. That is probably the most gourmand fragrance that they do. The next one's from Re Morisless. Uh, this was just posted on a, a post that I did in the community. Have you ever reviewed any of the Kayali perfumes? Are they something that interests you? I've never smelled any of them. I don't, I don't even know what they're about. I'm interested in any brand. I wanna try everything, so they probably will interest me if I read about them. The next one, coming to the end guys, also on the Lush video, Myrrh is one of my top three notes. I will be trying a Thousand Kisses Deep. Are there any other fragrance you recommend with Myrrh? That's from Miss Summer 225. Yes, there is Argent Provocateur. I'm actually wearing it today. La Jante by Argent Provocateur. Amazing Myrrh perfume, incense, powdery florals. It's really, really nice. There is Lita by Bogue, which just came out. Kind of pricey, but it's one of the biggest myrrhs I've tried with gardenia and um, kind of smoke and a little bit coffee-like. It's really rich, dark myrrh. Oh gosh, it's really, really good. There's Myrrh Imperial by Giorgio Armani. It's part of their Privé line. Gorgeous, churchy, incense-y myrrh perfume. And of course, Thousand Kisses Deep. It's my favorite Lush perfume. The next one is from Lavender Lavender, and this was on my Michael Kors Michael perfume review that I did so long ago. Oh, that's another one that I've phased out of my life the same way that I did with Stella. Bye bye. Hi Thomas, does it smell like Gucci Bloom or the old Kim K perfume? Yes, it does actually. The only difference between the Michael Kors one and the Kim Kardashian one and Gucci Bloom is that it's a little bit more complex. It does have a touch of incense in it. It's a bit more textured, if that makes sense. The Kim Kardashian one is a little bit one-noted and Bloom, it's very much in that realm, but there's just something a little bit more special about the Michael perfume. It was the first ever tuberose perfume that I smelled actually and just was bowled over by it. They have changed it quite a lot, which is the reason I phased it out. The original one that came out was unbelievable. It was way more complex than any of them, the new version or the Kim K one or the other one, but it's still nice now. It's just had a few things taken out of it. I still think it's the best out of those three though, even the reformulated one. So maybe try that one over the other two. And the last question is on my Lita review that I did by Bogue. Oh, one of my new loves of that perfume, I can tell you. This is from Perambulation again. Did you choose the shirt to match the logo? Yes, I did. <laughs> I mean, I didn't buy the shirt to match the logo of the perfume, but I definitely wore the shirt in that video to match the style of the perfume in that video. Said that quite a few times, didn't I, unnecessarily. Anyway, guys, that is my questions and answers video for March. Keep the questions coming. I will answer more in April if you want to ask me things. I mean, I don't know why you want to just sit here and listen to me talk all day long. I hope you guys have enjoyed your day or enjoying your day. I'm Ouch Fomano, trying to make the world small better one video at a time. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye. <laughs>